Welcome everybody, welcome to NRL from the sidelines. Um, you're, uh, we are sponsored by Rock Australia Radio. Uh, you can see that I'm unaccustomed to being the compere of this show. Sure, maybe um, I should take over. Maybe you should, <laughs> but then you don't need to be sitting in the seat to take over. Um, Thanks. And mate. so uh, notable by his absence is uh, our uh, esteemed um, host, Steve. Uh, Steve. We, we have Adam with his beanie on though. Yes, he looks more like a Ku Klux Klan member, but uh, mind you, that looks <laughs> that's a much better look. I think. Oh, that's <laughs> an <interesting. laughs> and as you can see, we are wearing our Mark Hughes Foundation uh, beanie for brain cancer. It's been a wonderful initiative this this week, mm. and good on the NRL for supporting it, and good on Mark Hughes and his foundation for supporting um, uh, research into brain cancer. Good stuff. Yep, and keep bringing it up. Yep, absolutely. Yep. So uh, as usual, we're going to talk about uh, this week's games. Which began on Thursday night, Brian. Yep. Uh, it was the Broncos hosting the Eels, and uh, the Eels coming out 18 uh, to 10 winners. Yeah, look, as I said, Tom, look, this game seems, I don't know whether I've been busy, but this game seems like a long time ago. Yeah. Maybe because it was a game that never reached the heights that it should have. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, what were you surprised about where it didn't reach the heights? Um, you know. When the Broncos, the Broncos beat you guys last week. Yes. And it was, uh, you know, baby Broncos, uh, injury ravaged Broncos. Uh, rigged. Well, you're not allowed to say that. <laughs> um, and uh, this week, you know, the Eels made a couple of changes and uh, I was tempted to pick them. Yep. I really was because they've got a really good record against Brisbane, particularly mm. in Brisbane. And I'm glad I did yeah. because they played terribly. They have no flair, no attack. And Brisbane weren't much better. Yeah, well, I mean, I, I think that, that score flatters both teams, to be honest. Yeah. Um, neither of them were very inspiring. Yep. Um, uh, the, the, I, I never saw the Eels getting in, in, in getting on top of this game, no. almost ever. No, they weren't in it at all. Mm. And so it's surprising that Brisbane, with the, the talent that they have in that team, couldn't put them away. Yeah. I mean, Zaka was just a great player, isn't he? Who? The winger? The guy who scored their tries and points? Oh, Isako. 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 Yeah, Jam- Jermaine Isako. Yeah, that's right. Him. Okay. Yeah. Good yeah, he's a, he's a huge talent. I mean, that oh, yeah. that that, um, that bombing he caught, and then he had to step to get around the player. Yeah. Um, he's, yeah, he, he's, he's, I don't know when his contract will be up, but I tell you what, um, he'll be getting some offers. Oh, look, I mean, it's, it's quite amusing. I mean, and, uh, apparently he was a Cronulla junior. Right. And he wanted to play for the Broncos now. Yeah. Let me just give you a tip. You don't really want to play for the Broncos. <laughs> but yeah, look, I, I don't know whether um, whether all the talk about Wayne leaving and Craig Bellamy coming in has has affected the team. Mm. But yeah, they were they were definitely off. And it was it marked um, game eight hundred for Wayne Bennett. Yep. I think uh, apparently nobody's even approached seven hundred yet. That's that's yeah. what a performance that is. So, oh, absolutely. You know, I, I mean, we all have our opinions about Wayne Bennett, but uh, you've got to give him credit that uh, he's been. Uh, for his longevity, if nothing else, he's been uh, he's been a survivor. I do have a question. I have a question for the NRL, Tom. Okay. The NRL, NRL or NRL from the sidelines? No, no, the NRL. Okay. Like yeah. The the real the governing body. Okay. A couple of weeks ago, NRL, Dean Payne made some comments about refereeing and a Brisbane match concerning his team. <clears throat> yep. Basically, along the lines of, yeah, well, you don't beat Brisbane at Suncorp. And uh, he was he caught a massive fine. Yes. During the week after the Brisbane Roosters game, mm-hmm. Wayne Bennett was interviewed. You know what Wayne Bennett said? There's a bias against yes. Brisbane when we yes. play. Yes. I heard NRL. That. Where's Wayne Bennett's fine? Mm. Mm. Because yes, if, it was, if it was any point. other coach, they would have been fine. They would have copped it. And the, the, but why? Do you, you think they're afraid of him? Why should they be afraid of him? Well, yeah, afraid. but but seriously, he basically said the refs were cheats because Brisbane had had uh, a continual disadvantage, <laughs> which is which is uh, which is ironic, really, when you think of the the draw <laughs> up until this year, they would get virtually every every Friday night game when there was no Thursday night yeah. game. Yeah, um, no, they just they can mark their calendar by by their games because they happen virtually every week uh, on the oh, same yeah. night of the week. So so angry, so angry. Mm. Anyway, and uh, Parramatta. What do we say about Parramatta, though? Oh, I mean, seriously, they've got. I, I think I think they're, tr- they're There's no there's no doubt they're putting in effort. 
I, I think they're, they're putting in. I think they're putting in effort. I just think they're 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 just, I, they're just running out of ideas. I don't know. Right. You know, people like Alvaro have really come into his own this year. I think he's been he's been good. Gao has been good. Yep. Um, I think uh, Norma was energetic in in fullback. I think yep. you know, that might have been a good experiment. Yep. I, I've got to admit, I, I love the Gutherson, but I don't think maybe I wasn't watching correctly, but I didn't think that he shone no. in the six the way I think they expected him to. Yeah, which is a bit of a shame because mm-hmm. I actually had Clint Gutherson in my uh, state of origin team for his versatility yeah. and and his ability yeah. to play anywhere from one to six. Sure. And uh, yeah, that was a. Uh, that was a bit of an audition that he failed. Mm, sure. Anyway, let's keep going because I don't want to talk about Brisbane. Well, apparently, I don't like either of them. <laughs> but just in case you uh, forgot that you missed that, he's just going to tell you that. What? So that you don't like either of those teams. Yeah. All right. Let's get to the next game, which was the Raiders versus the Seagulls at GIA Stadium. And the Raiders obviously got something to say. And the Raiders uh, won a thriller, twenty-one twenty. I'm calm. And uh, Nick Kotrick scored the first two trucks, which was uh, one, one of the forward pass, but we won't talk about that because we're not allowed to rule on forward passes. <laughs> I was going to say, like, talk and we're about... objective here. Uh, did you see it? Uh, look, I, I, I watched it. Allow me, allow me. I don't remember talk... seeing a forward pass. Okay. Uh, anyone who uh, is listening on Facebook, I'll post the pictures where where uh, White passes the ball mm-hmm. and Kotrick is a half metre in front of him and does this. To grab the ball and then scores. And I'm just thinking, are you kidding me, aren't you? And of course, according to Brian, this is the only time that a forward pass will be scored this that will happen this year because any time it happens to my. Oh, team, excuse me, please, 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 please Tom, don't be silly. It's a totally <laughs> different set of rules. <laughs> You've been ridiculous. What about, <laughs> no, being what, about, what about before their first try? Yes. BJ Lulai goes down the uh, sideline, gets rolled into touch, gets up with white paint on his hand. The touch judge is standing there and doesn't see him going to touch. Two sets later, they score. Yeah. Oh, what? We, we've not mentioned that either. <laughs> what about... You know, you know that nobody else is interested in this except what about, you. <laughs> what about... What about Hodjo being sent off? Ah, uh, Sinbin. Yes. When he was 25 metres from the play and half a metre in front of the ring. Yeah, I thought that was a bit ordinary. Uh, we also... Yeah. Also, the last the last goal they kicked yes. from Frank Winterstein being offside. Right. Yeah, have a look at that too, because he was standing right next to the ref. I don't know how that's offside. Anyway, look, I, it just honestly was it was it was it Klein? No, Klein wasn't the, the ref in this game. No, no. he was a, he was a ref in the, the Broncos game, wasn't he? It just you know, I just I just don't get it. Mm. You know, like things that are that like they were just three blatantly obvious ones. You know, look, I must admit, I might have missed some of them that went our way, but. The blatantly obvious things, yeah. I don't get how the refs make mistakes like that. I really don't. And the sad thing is, is that now costs my team. Well, well like rather significantly. That's our second one point loss this season. Well they said they said on the during the commentary that uh, this could this could decide eat both team seasons because you're both in a precarious position. Can, well, well, a loss could could mean the end of your season. Can I just say though, yeah. just 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 for the record out there, any Raiders fans like Brian Sugars is out there and giving yeah. a hard time at the moment. Yeah, the Raiders have had five wins. You know who they've beaten? The Knights, the Seagulls, Titans, Broncos, Parramatta. The bottom five teams. Yeah, but they beat you. Yeah, and a bit of help. Anyway, <laughs> well, there. I think we might move on from. Oh, there. I don't know why we might. It's just. It's uh, just Anyway, yeah, because yeah, uh, before a lawsuit happens, can um, I can I just say it, can I just say that on yes. on that I, I, I watched a lot of games this this round. Yes, like you know, occasionally I don't care because it's like Paramount are playing. <laughs> um, you know, one thing that did impress me with the Raiders, mm-hmm. they they do things at speed. <laughs> yes, when uh, when uh, when their hooker gets back, you know, the problem with the busted shoulder, uh, yeah. Josh Hudson. Yeah, yeah, that's him. Yeah. So I've had a time for names every time. When he gets back and they've got a bit more direction at a dummy half, yes. If they're still doing things at speed, they're actually going to worry a lot of teams. Oh yeah, yeah. look, I, 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 when they're on, they're, when they're on, they're very dangerous. I mean, Jack yeah. White is superb. Nick Kodrick, yeah. um It's just that it's just the pace that they're going at at the moment. Like anyone who's out there, feel free to disagree with me because you can't. But the Raiders are doing things faster than other teams. Yeah. When it comes together, they are going to be. Oh, yeah. They're going to be dangerous. But, but then with any team that, that has that kind of 
fast play the ball and speed is that you're more open to errors and perhaps that's what's happening is they're making more errors because they're trying things uh, they don't always Let, let's just let's just leave it as manly near the raiders on the raiders blew it in the last <laughs> minute uh all right well that will take us to friday night's game which was uh, at uh, 1300 smile stadium cowboys home stadium where they hosted the melbourne storm and um, in what was i think a pretty dour affair um the storm came out seven seven points to six winners um, i've got to admit i i i got I, I failed to get excited about this game i thought i would yeah because you have a look at the past history of the cowboys and storm and, and they're exciting games yep yeah wow, after about 10 minutes i'm thinking mm. i don't know why i'm bothering yeah it was two teams that have fallen from their uh from their high point um uh, yeah, not a lot to say about that. I mean, well, I was expecting a very tough encounter, and I came back really underwhelmed. Mm. Um, yeah, probably the the most interesting thing in that match was uh, a big late hit on Jonathan Thurston by Kafusi, not Kafusi, Sam Cassiano. Right. Yeah. Um, that is. Uh, oh, I agree that you need to put pressure on the on the playmakers and the kickers. Sure. But he hit him late and hard and high. Hmm. Uh, that yeah, was, he was on report, wasn't he? Yeah. Yeah. And uh, does he? Do you know what? Uh, how many weeks he was going to get? Um, I'm I'm not sure, but I have this to say. I'm a bit surprised. Craig Bellamy, as everybody will say, is like you know the master coach. We'll take an average performing player and turn him into a superstar. That often happens. All that's happened is Sam Cassiano has lost a little bit of weight. He's averaging less than 50 meters. He comes in, plays one game, mm. keeps blokes like uh, uh, Christian Welch and who's there, another big forward that they've got down there out of the starting team, and then gets put on report and misses a couple of games. Yeah. So he's, he's had a couple of failures with a couple of big men. I think George Rose was another one that yeah, was, George, George Rose, he did fail George did, Rose. Didn't, uh, didn't get better um, or didn't get much better. Um, but I mean, you've got to say that Craig Bellamy has, Bellamy has made a lot of players better. There's no doubt about that. You no. can't you can't deny that. Anyway, let's move on because there's another boring game coming up next. <laughs> so, it was a um, a really dour affair. Hard to get excited about it. And the um, the Melbourne Storm uh, coming out one point winners. The uh, the next game was at Central Coast Stadium, uh, what used to be Blue Tongue Stadium, where the um, Roosters took a home game to uh, to there to play the Titans. Mm. And the uh, the Roosters came out winners 34-14, but the um, the halftime score actually was 14 to six, if I remember rightly, to the the um, the Titans. It was your classic game of two halves because the um, the Roosters were struggling for any momentum. Um, they were struggling for any consistency with the ball, as they often do. They they drop the ball a lot, um, but they came out a completely different side in the second half and just blew the um, the Titans away. I I, I was. Really impressed with the second half performance, um, both in attack and defence for the Roosters, and it gave me a real hope for the future because if they can play like this, or if they're building, then uh, then I'm you know it's it's looking good. I was very sad because I picked the Titans. <laughs> so that's what you've got, is it? That's it. Well, um, you know, I I expected more from the Titans, and you know, unless and like you said, going to half time, I was thinking, oh, I'm on a winner here. Yeah. I'm going to be laughing about this. Well, I was getting frustrated, as I often do with my team, because they um, they just keep dropping the ball. Yeah. They're not completing sets. Well, you know, you drop the ball, you're not going to complete sets. And then uh, they came out, and I think we kicked off to the Titans. And in their final set, they, final uh, play, they kicked to Joseph Manu, and he mm-hmm. dropped, he knocked it on. Yep. Uh, knocked, knocked on a bomb. And I thought, oh, you're kidding me. Is this going to be just the way the second half is going to pan out? But they regrouped. And Tedesco uh, played the best game he's played for us at all uh, of, of the whole season. I thought he was absolutely superb. Um, well, you know, you can say what you like, but I, I think would he was be superb. He was worry. superb. Um, Latrell Mitchell was very quiet in the first half and uh, made a couple of errors. Yep. Um, but uh, he showed why they're considering for why they're considering for Origin with that barnstorming run that scored yeah. the try. I mean, he's done it a few times this year where he's just made something out of nothing. And everybody says, get the ball to Latrell. Well, yep. maybe they're going to be start, starting to do that more. Um, Anthony Don, terrific game again. Uh, yep. Ash Taylor showed his flashes of brilliance. Yep. I mean, that, that little pass to Don where he twisted around and scored, um, the vision of that that play is just fantastic. Yeah. Um, now, I know you're going to talk about the disputed try. 
Um, so off you go. I'm not going to talk about anything. Uh, well, oh, you just said you had something to say. We've, d- we've done enough in this match. <laughs> well, I thought it was well, a very what encouraging thing. What do you think about the disputed try, Tom? Uh, you're, look, you're the rooster man. Well, I mean, according to the rule, he was on the inside shoulder. So, But in reality, uh, nothing there would have actually stopped them, stopped the roosters having a go at defending. So, you know, I, I thought it was uh, it was lucky, and, and I was going to take it at the time because we needed we needed uh, we needed to get that no try. Um, but anyway, it wasn't the difference in the game. By the refs. It wasn't a, it wasn't the difference in the game. And guess who the ref was? Anyway, Ben Cummins. Well, see there you go. Which is surprising. That's less wasn't that. Uh, anyway, that was the first game out of ten that we've won at Central Coast Stadium. We've had a really. Okay, that's game. why I picked the Gold Coast. Yeah. Well, you were wrong. And next um, game. Well, so this game, this game was three versus four. It was. See, Warriors hosted the the, the South Sydney Rabbitohs, and uh, and I must admit, I tipped the Warriors Warriors thinking that they would bounce back, um, but I really didn't think about just how well the Rabbitohs are playing. They um they won the game easily, thirty to ten, um, and uh, they scored most of their tries in the first half. Yep. Um, and uh, and I, I guess you've got to give credit to the Warriors for at least putting in in the second half. Yeah, look, I still, I still don't think the Rabbitohs are playing that great. Well, I mean, that's scary. Let's face it, they've, they've, they've won by 20 points against the team that's coming, well, at that time, third. And I don't think they played that well. Yeah. I mean, I should have tipped, I should have tipped against the Warriors because we beat them 32-0 and we're, 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 we're not mm-hmm. going that well. Yeah. Um, it's just... I, well, it's scary to think that the Rabbitohs are winning all these games and not playing well. Because well, I really do. Like, if I think at some point, South's going to click and they're going to put 50 or 60 on a team. And it could be any team in the comp. And I they, think, are, they, they have the potential to be scary good right now. And I think there's basically one difference in, in, in that team, besides the coach, because I think the coach has done wonders with them. But I actually think the one thing that is different in the Rabbitohs is Tom and George. Honestly, I think... The other, te- the other players are pretty much playing to their potential, and I think the combinations are maybe uh, have tightened up and their defence mm-hmm. has got a bit better. But Tom and George, you know, you know, I mean, my favourite yeah. saying was going to be, and, and, and a bird just drops the ball. Yeah, you know, it was. That was yeah. a classic, classic line that you would use um, when you describe the Rabbitohs. They have been solid, they've really dropped the ball, they've been barnstorming, and still yeah. both scored an individual try that was, they were exceptional yeah. tries. So they, I think, have been the difference in that team this year. And obviously, Anthony Seabold has a touch because he's got he's got the best out of them. Oh, and, absolutely. Uh, and out on the back of that, obviously, we all know if you get get some go forward, then the halves and the, the backs can do their job. And you know they've got electric halves, uh, electric um, backs, and all yep. their backs are exciting but, players. But see, but see, that's that's where I think they're falling over at the moment because if you look at it, um, Dane Gagai and Greg Inglis have not been setting the world on fire. No, no. Uh, Johnson's been playing well. Their wingers, have been, out. their wingers have been in and out of mm-hmm. games. Mm-hmm. So, you know, really, when those players come into form, and let's face it, Inglis and, and Gay Guy are going to hit form at some point. Well, 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 Origin might do that to them. And, yeah. and they're going to be monsters. Playing behind that pack, as long as they're getting early ball, mm. I, I can see, I really can see the Rabbitohs really monstering someone. Oh, yeah, I mean, and I uh, know Steve, Brian is not, like, not likely to like me saying this, but... John Sutton continues to perform uh, fantastically. I think I he's mean, been great. I don't care what you say about yeah. Sutton. Yeah, I, look, I mean, he's, he's great. I don't, like I said, I don't think he was ever at origin level, no. but he's been superb. He's been a great leader. You know, you know what's good about John Sutton? What? It means I can still play first grade because I'm as good as him. Uh, you're <laughs> kidding me. <laughs> Here you go. There's a classic example, um, uh, viewers. Go to NRL from the sideline. And tell Brian oh, what you really think about comments like that, okay? Please. Because there's no uh, sense of his out there. He's kidding himself. All right, let's move on because that was three versus four, and this is one, one versus, versus two. two, and this was a game to watch. I mm. tell you, this was a game to watch. The Pan of Panthers um, uh, at home in, in front of a full uh, full crowd, um, uh, pack, pack stadium against the Dragons. The Panthers winning twenty eight points to two. Now I think. At half time, it was not oh, a big no, game. It was wasn't a eight two, difference. something like that. You know, yeah, something's wrong with the dragons. Mm. Yeah, and and, it's, and um, I, I I heard a couple of comments during the week that uh, there's two teams in the comp at the moment that haven't uh, used a lot of players in their roster. Yep. Uh, that's the Cowboys. Yep. And the Dragons. The Cowboys have used the least amount of players, and the Dragons the next. 
Then look where they are on the table. Yeah, interesting. However, the dragons, you've now got Ben Hunt's playing injured. Yeah. Jack DeBellin's playing injured. Yeah. And they look like the wheels are about to fall off. And I'm sorry, Barry, mm. one of our regular listeners, they just don't look comfortable at the moment. Yeah. And perhaps, perhaps it might be because McGregor's a, a reasonably fresh coach. They need to just say to Ben Hunt, mind you, how do you say the state of origin Australian halfback, hey, you need to have a week off to recover. Sure. But something needs to happen there because they're looking stale. Mm -hmm. And I was thinking, uh, and I actually thought earlier in the week, origin is a great time for that because mm -hmm. they'll be able to rest up. It'll be great. However, <laughs> those teams going to be playing. Those players that are injured have been picked. Yeah. So, yeah. Look, I think um, I think they they're travelling better than they were last year because they yep. were, they were falling out uh, falling over earlier last year. Yep. Everybody expected it. Um, look, I think they they tried their hearts out last last week. They defended well for the first half, yep. but the Panthers just they get a roll on and they are just unstoppable. There is. I mean, you know, I I could have seen and I know this is a long way out, but um, on the form that I saw the other day, I. You know, Panthers and Rabbitohs are my form, two form teams at the moment. Oh, Panthers, honestly. Panthers easily. And like I said, yeah. I think if the Dragons can get over those injuries, they yeah. might be back. But what do you say about the Panthers? Oh, yeah. Jeez, how well are well, they going? Everywhere he goes, a team gets better. You know, it's amazing. It is incredible. You know what? Because he, he plays to their strengths more than anything else. He's and just, it's just fantastic to watch. He, he, he's nothing to look at. You know, he's, he's, um, I don't know. I'm sure there's, I'm sure there's some. You got a man crush on him. I don't have a man crush on him, no. <laughs> but I mean, you know, he's, he's, he, he's, he's a knock around bloke. Yep. But you're right. He comes to a team. He, is, he has the nous to assess a team and work out how he can use his strengths. And when his game management is absolutely sensational. I mean, yeah. Yeah. He's not going to be spoken in the same name as a Smith or a, or a Thurston or, or a Lockyer or somebody like that. But there'll be a special place for James Maloney, the man who can, you know, turn teams around yep. and carry them to greatness. I mean, that's well, a special player. Let's know? face it, if he does, if the Panthers do make the, the final, the grand final in the next couple of years, yeah. it's four clubs in a row for him. Absolutely. Yeah, yep. Yep. and you know, on, on current form, this is the year, you know, because the way, the way they're playing, you can well, easily see them in the grand final. Well, I think, I think if they had their full complement of players, mm -hmm. they would be for sure. And Bradley, that thought just absolutely disgusts me. But anyway, um, um, he's a hater. Hates my team. Hates your team, Bradles. I have no love for the Panthers. Sorry. No. Um, anyway, I'm sure I'll cop that from Bradley tomorrow. Um, so that was a, a quite some performance by the by the Panthers. You've got to give it to them. Mm -hmm. um, now I'm going to hand this over to you on Sunday because I unfortunately had uh, other commitments on Sunday. The Knights um, hosted the Sharks, and I saw the opening parts of this game, and I thought the Sharks had the Knights measure. I never saw this, this score coming. Uh, the Knights 10, the Sharks 48. I don't know what you want me to say. Nine finally, to two. finally, uh, what's his name? What's his name? You know, the halfback. Moylan. Moylan. I think yes. he's thinking yes. of Finally, Moylan hit four. Did he? He set up six of those nine tries. Wow. Wow. He was on fire. And you know what? For a few lucky touches and the wayward passes, that score could have been a lot more. Okay. You know, Valentine Holmes was exceptional. Mm -hmm. uh, the Knights had no answer. Um, it, it's funny because the Knights have had a lot of wins this season and yeah. they've been gritty. They've been... Mm -hmm. We are... It's sort of like last year they struggled. They, yeah. they tried to play fancy, shut teams out. Mm -hmm. This year they've gone, you know what? We know we can win games. We've just got to work on our defence and we've got to be solid with what we do. Yeah. And the last two weeks, the defensive wheels have fallen off the Knights. Yeah. And this was this would be particularly difficult to watch if you're yeah. a Knights fan. Yeah, well, they, they, uh, Nathan Brown described it as the worst game they've played all season. Um, yeah, I have and it was. Season. And, it was. and I, th I think it's, it's a real tragedy that uh, Mitchell Pearce went down when he did. I don't mm. know how long before he's back. It could have to be in the next few weeks, you'd think. Mm. Um, and, you know, look, it's probably going to be too late for them. This, this is probably yeah. a, sort of a tipping point for them in terms of their season. Yeah, I think, I think, uh, it's, uh, I think it's over. I think the dream run's finished. It's, and it's per, perhaps, perhaps teams have got to uh, have figured out how to work them out. You're a better um, team than they're playing at the moment. There was I tell you, there was an incident in that game. Mind you, in front of 21,000 people. Oh, that's the thing, isn't it? There was an incident in the game where uh, Luke Lewis came out of the line and absolutely uh, poleaxed 
uh, Colonel Ponga. Mm -hmm. to, he hit him so hard. You know what was refreshing from uh, Nathan Brown? Is that he said, you know what, Luke Lewis is a very experienced, a long life paraphrasing here, people. Luke Lewis is a very experienced player and he doesn't have that in his game. Mm -hmm. He might have hit him and it might have been a bit hard and a bit late, but it's not a deliberate thing. He's not that kind of a bloke. It's pretty, um, he's Pretty pretty decent bloke, isn't he, Nathan Brown? Yeah, well, I mean, yeah, and then and it, the thing is, he's played, and it doesn't not that long ago, and he was a good player. Like he was, he was Nathan Brown. Yeah, yeah Nathan Brown. Yeah, underrated as a player, I think, at times. Um, thrown into coaching really early, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, and that hit was nasty, but it was refreshing to see the coach come out and say, "Yeah, it shouldn't have happened, but that bloke." Really, that's not in his game. That was an accident. It's not something that he went out to do. Yep. And and I actually actually you actually have to take your hat off to that to that type of talk mm. because it shows someone who understands the game, mm. which I think is what we're lacking with our in our game with where the rules are and procedures and how penalties are given. I think we lack what's we lack the consistency in the flow of the game. Sure. And I think Nathan Brown absolutely nailed it just then with that comment. Good. So. But we better move on. Um, so let's have a look at the, the final game, which was the West Tigers against the Bulldogs. Yep. Um, the West Tigers uh, coming out 14-10. Doesn't sound like it was a very exciting game by lots of it. You know, this was a bizarre game. Now, I know you, you said you didn't watch this game. You, you sh This is a game you could watch and you could say, at no point were the Bulldogs going to win. Right. They were terrible. Right. And the Tigers didn't know it. They right. could not put it together to put the Bulldogs to bed. Mm. It was absolutely amazing. The Bulldogs could do nothing right. Uh, everything seemed to go wrong. They couldn't flow in attack. They couldn't hit in defense. Mm. And the Tigers just couldn't reach out and grab the game. If, unfortunately, if the Bulldogs were playing like that against probably any other team, except for Parramatta and Cowboys, they would have lost by 20 or 30. Right. It was that kind of a game. Very disappointing. If you're a Bulldogs fan right now, considering what's going on with uh, Moses M by apparently going to sign with the, uh, the West Tigers this week, mm -hmm. you'd be going, he's our best player and the only bloke who can score points. And apparently Aaron Woods is getting forced out as well, by all accounts. Yeah, Back so to the Tigers. Mm. So uh, that's that's your round for, uh, for round 12. Um, Brian, you can have the honour of oh, reading the letter this week. I sure, I surely will. I'll use my uh, device here. Uh, let's see. So, in equal first place, uh, first place in for and against the Panthers mm. have now overtaken and leapfrogged the Dragons, who are in second. Yep. Uh, we have the Rabbitohs in third. Mm. Mm, that is interesting. Yep. The Sharks in fourth. The Again, Warriors. The team that just keeps winning and you don't see them. Yep, the yeah. Warriors in fifth. Uh, they're all on equal 16. On 14 points, we have a plethora of oh, teams. Plethora? No, I like that. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Very good. Uh, Storm, Roosters, and the Tigers. Uh, and then just outside of the eight, the Broncos, also on 14. Uh, we have the Raiders and the Knights on 10 points. The uh, Poor Eagles. Poor Eagles are in 12. Uh, the Titans are in 13th, the Dogs in 14th, the Cowboys in 15th, and the Lowly Eagles, Rolling Stone Motherless. Okay. Last. So that's the ladder. Now, um, um, Tom, yes, just before yes. we get on to our, our next well, segment, we are, we, we are short on time, so... Ah, oh, short going. on time, don't worry about that. Well, the producer will, uh, will be having some words. He's not here. Yeah, I know. Tell me, Tom, of that top eight, do yes. you see any changes to the end of the year? Um... It's an interesting question, I think. Yeah, look, I mean, I think the Raiders have probably got potential. Yep. Um, you know, if they stop shooting themselves in the foot, they could make it make into the into the eight. I think the Tigers uh, are on a nice edge. Um, you know, they've, they've got yep. to improve. Um, Will the Warriors be in the top eight at the end of the season? Yeah, look, it's hard to say. I, I think the, the, the teams at risk, the Warriors and the Tigers at this stage, um, the Broncos, yeah. You know, I can't see them improving that much. They might creep into the eight. The Raiders are the only first team at the bottom that I actually think have a shot of getting into the eight at this stage. Well, well, I'd like to think my team still has a bit of a shot. Uh, yeah, and that's... Yeah. Hey, come on, we'll get those players back from injury and we'll be flying. And I think comedy is not your strength. Oh, come on! We've beaten some of those top teams. All right. 
So, um, a couple of things we're going to do before we talk about next week's games. One yes. is to remind people about our competition. Yes. Uh, it's the State of Origin competition. It's being held on the NRL from the sidelines website, uh, Facebook site. And the competition is uh, be the first to nominate the winning team, New South Wales or Queensland, and the winning margin. Uh, in the end, it could be, end up being the closest to the winning margin if, we, if, it's, if it's a big score, uh, you know, if nobody picks it. Um, but either way, you have to be the first to, to nominate on the, um, on the Facebook site. So please go to NRL from the sidelines and nominate, for instance, uh, New South Wales by 12 or something like that. New South Wales by 60. And, uh, or by 60, um, which would be nice. And the first winning entry, that is, will be by time, will win um, the mug, which I forgot to bring in. But oh. you saw, if you're watching the show last week, which I'm sure you all were, um, it's a wonderful mug with our ugly faces on it. Ugly mugs, and perhaps. And it's, uh, it's got the NRL from the sidelines logo on it. It's, a, it's an absolute collector's item. And uh, you should race in to get that. So uh, please, please enter the competition. And uh, we'll be announcing the winner um, after game one. Uh, at, uh, at the MCG, which we're about to talk about uh, in regard to the teams. Now, we won't be able to spend a lot of time on this. Uh, I, I, would li- I would like to, yes, I would like to read out the Queensland team first. Sure. Starting with their fullback, Billy Slater, yes. Valentine Holmes, Greg Inglis, Will Chambers, Dane Gagai, Cameron Munster, Ben Hunt, Dylan Napper, Andrew McCulloch comes in for Cameron Smith, mm-hmm. Jared Wallace, Gavin Cooper, Felice Cafusi, Josh McGuire, on the interchange bench, Michael Morgan, Josh Papali, Cohen Hess, and Jai Arrow. That's a pretty strong team, really. Now, yep. tell me this, Queenslanders. <laughs> oh, I don't know if I Where's your loyalty? Where's your loyalty? Where's your loyalty? What's Darius Boyd done wrong? Uh, not playing well enough. Ah, where's your loyalty? You know, always, always you two out of Queenslanders are out there saying, it's about loyalty, we stick solid. You know what? Where's Scott? Where's Where's your big man? You leave him out, you suck it up. You pick on form the same as everyone else. There's no loyalty. Well, well, yeah. You could argue You could argue the fact that they haven't needed to change because the team has been so so settled with such great players that there's been no need to change. I agree. Um, and yeah. that's the only reason. You know what? If you guys were losing, you'd change your team anyway. All right, all right, that's all I have to say. I'm going to read out the the Origin team. I've got it ordered in slightly different to uh, to the way it came up tonight, but it's pretty it's pretty much the same names. Um, uh, fullback team James Tedesco. The wingers will be at Josh Addo Carr and Tommy Turbo. Oh, actually, I, I'm not sure if that's the order, but anyway. It is. Um, yeah, the centres will be Latrell Mitchell and James Roberts. Um, speed, 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 speed. That is incredible. Oh, come speed on, of those of those five. James Maloney and Nathan Cleary in the halves, which is great. Thank you. Um, Regan Campbell, Campbell Gillard and David Clem are the, for, are the forwards. David Fox. Cook is the um, is the hooker. Boyd Corder, Tyson Frizzell, Jack DeBellin, uh, Tyrone, uh, they're the, the backs. Um, Tyrone Peachy, Jake Trevojevic, Paul Vaughan, Angus Crichton will be the bench. And there was Tarek Sims and one other Nick person. Cotter. Nick Cotter. Nick who who were their reserves. So I think that's a pretty solid team, but... We have a lot of um, a lot of um, what do you call them? debutants, um, and that's going to be an interesting uh, mix. Okay, I've got a couple of things to say about this team. Mm-hmm. Now, I'm I'm not arguing uh, against uh, James Tedesco. However, he is probably the most selfish player in the league. <laughs> What are you laughing about? It's, it's true. Like he set you up with a compliment before he slammed you down with a. It's true. Look, you off. know, you know that I, you know that I love Teddy. I love Teddy. Yeah. I really do. But I, I don't think that he should have been in that team. Yeah, I've said a lot, a lot of times. Um, before he came to us, I said he must be an only child because he never learned how to shoot. Yep. Um, um, but at, I actually think that that's getting better. At the very least, I would have. Uh, I don't understand why they've picked uh, Tom on the wing. I think that's a really bad move. He's either in the team at a full, as fullback or he's not in the team. And I think that uh, having defensive issues with Latrell Mitchell and James Roberts, speed to burn, they'll score three tries for sure. I think having uh, a fullback playing outside of them on the wing is a mistake. That's 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 well, my issue. I, I would have had, and I, and I hate to say this, 
I would have rather had Nick Kotrick in the team on the wing ahead of uh, Tommy. Yeah. Well, the the commentary the commentary today that I read on the NRL website was that um, uh, under Laurie Daly, it was all about stopping New South, uh, stopping Queensland scoring. Yep. It was all about defence. They were dull and boring games. You win by two points, you know, and they win by thirty, but we didn't score any points. Yep. This is a team that can score points, and they're saying we will score more points than you. Yep, that's that's the point. That's um, the, I think that's that's the, that's this is strategy in this team is we will roll yep. over you, we will score lots of points. Yep. Yes, we'll let a few in, but we are going to score more points than you, and this yep. the game is going to be exciting. The, my only other criticism of that yep. team, and I have them in my team as well, so don't get me wrong. Yep, I've been thinking about it, and I think Boyd Cordner is the luckiest man alive. Because did you watch the game on Saturday? Because his form has not been as good as those guys that are on the bench, and his form has not been as good as Tarek Sims. Uh, and I think that uh, by good luck, no, you know what? He was playing exceptionally well last last year. Mm-hmm. Uh, being named captain has probably saved him. Well, I'm happy to have him there. Yeah. You, you're probably right in that, but I think when it, when you pick a captain, you stick with them. Because he's a he's a leader, and yep. if you watched the game last Saturday, yep. he was terrific. But he it doesn't matter really because terrific. because Peachy, Trevojevic, and uh, Crichton and Sims all offer something different, and I think Boyd Cordner. As I said, said, the leadership. Was said, I would. I said I would love to have Boyd Cordner at my club, mm-hmm. but I think he's in a slot, and I and I don't know if he can offer a lot different. Well, I so, mean, but I'm not going to argue against picking him. Well, I mean, you, you could see, see Maloney passing to Cordner in the other line. Yep. He did it did it for the Roosters. Yep. Um, Cordner makes lots of metres, and he's inspirational. When you want somebody to lift, when you want the team to lift, yep. you give the ball to Cordner. But he hasn't been doing it this year. Well, he did it, did it on oh, Saturday. One game. And he's, got, he's been getting better. Um, the, 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 good, the big advantage for him in this team is that he's got uh, Latrell Mitchell, James Maloney, and him all playing the same side of the field, and they all played together last yep. Last year, well, they've all played together sure. as in, sure. in club land. So and again, I think the argument is, um, Fiddler wants to see an exciting brand of football. He yep. wants to see points scored. He knows he's going to going to get some scored against him. Yep. Uh, and that's why he's gone for the gamble like Mitchell and Roberts. I mean, Roberts can do what he can, does what he can do. Mitchell does what he can do. And Ado oh, Car gets the ball. I mean, well, that is a lot. Ado Car's not getting the ball off Tedesco. That's the problem. <laughs> that's my well, issue. Tedesco, Tedesco. Um, had two try assists last year in game one. One to Bologna yeah. and one to uh, one to Jerry Pierce. So, you know, you can do it. Either way, um, forwards, win, forwards win games and our forwards absolutely are a cut above the Queensland. Yeah. I, I would, yeah. I'm a little bit worried. I think our backs are probably not as good. But, oh, man, I think yeah. our, our forward pack is yeah. exceptional and yeah. let's see Queensland try and roll through that without yeah. Matt Scott. Should be a very entertaining game. Uh, June 6th, I think it is, mm. Wednesday night. Uh, oh. MCG, we'll get together and watch that game. Uh, fantastic. All right, we better have much time. time next week's games. Yep. Um, so All right. Uh, on Thursday, the 31st, we have at the mighty Brookvale Oval, the Sea Eagles versus the Cowboys. What a great television that's going to make. <laughs> yeah. Um, no, I don't think so. Um, um, all right. So um, I'm just catching up because my iPhone is yeah. a bit slow. So, yeah. Uh, sea Eagles without their two best players who are who are the of the New South Wales team. <laughs> Uh, and of course, Walker with his busted face. And so the Cowboys won't be with. Uh, they'll have. Uh, they'll have JT. Cooper. They won't be. They'll be without Cooper and Walker, Michael Morgan. Yep. Um, I think so. They'll be a solid team. Yeah. I think. I think the Eagles will win this by plenty. <laughs> <laughs> That's a true supporter. Good I, I, I do at Brookvale on a Thursday night. Hey Cowboys, yep. bring mm. bring your beanies. Not the cow. Not the Cowboys have been offering much, have they? Uh, look, I, I'm going to splinter on that for the moment because oh, I really, honestly, I need a good reason. I need a good reason to pick the Seagulls. Brad, he's a hater, isn't it? A real hater. All right, I need a good reason to Come pick on, the Seagulls. Come okay. on, then. Uh, Friday, Friday at six o'clock, the Rabbitohs right. will be hosting the Sharks. Tom can't read either. Yeah, yes. there it is. There. Six o'clock, is it? Well, where's the six o'clock? There's no six o'clock game. That's right. No. Because because yeah. there's um, only right. four games. That's right. right. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> so I'm just in automatic mode. Anyway. Um, so the uh, the Friday night game is going to be the Rabbitohs against the Sharks. Now the Rabbitohs will be without Angus Crichton and GI. Um, I think that's and cool. Cool. and Cook. That's mm, pretty big. Which is a and big the Sharks uh, will be missing no one because they Valentine Holmes. Oh yeah, Valentine um, Holmes. Holmes and 
Anybody else? I don't think so. Oh, the uh, Cal, the Raider, the Rabbitohs will also be missing Greg Inglis, Danny yes. Gagai. Well, I actually did say that. Uh, Greg Inglis, that's right. They'll be missing did Greg Inglis. Did you say I that? did say Greg Inglis, yes. And Danny Gagai. Listen to the tape. And Damien Cook. Um, I didn't say Angus Crichton. And Angus Crichton, I said that. Yeah. Yeah. I think I think I, I hate to say this, Steve. I think with those key outs, and I'm talking they are key outs, mm. the Sharkies might just be nipping at you. Full strength, I'd be going the bunnies. But I'm not going yeah. to. Because because I've got to look at the origin ins and outs, I'm going to be splitting around all these games for the moment. Oh, um, except for the heels and the nights there'll be nobody on their team. Um, um toss up. Uh, so Saturday, uh, Saturday right. evening will be the Eels versus the Knights uh, at ANZ Stadium. Um, gee, I'd like to be able to tip the Knights. I really would. I am going to tip the Knights. And that's mostly due to my Paramount hatred. Yeah, well, I figured that. Yeah, but I'm going the Knights. Pretty fair bet. Um, okay, so I'm thinking about tipping the Knights on that one. See, even though there's no origin players, they're still splintering. So I'll have no splintering about the next game, which is Sunday afternoon. The West Tigers uh, are going to be hosted by the um, the Roosters at Allianz Stadium. Might even maybe go to that game. Yeah. Um, and uh, look, the West Tigers are losing nobody. Yeah, I'm on the but, I'm on the Tigers but, for this. But they're not inspiring at the moment. We'll be missing Cordner, Napa. Um, thankfully, not our halves, which is great. Cordner, Napa, Latrell, Mitchell. Um, Tedesco. Tedesco. Yeah, that's pretty big. I, I'll I'll be curious to know who they're putting fullback. Um, look, I'll have to stick with my boys, um, yeah. and I'll go to the Tigers because I think their rooster strike power all comes from Latrell, and he's not there. Well, I, that's a big call. And your fullback runs your defence, and Tedesco is there. Yeah, that is, that is a big call. So, um, oh, so no, 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 sorry, I think you're right. I think you're right. I think Tedesco has done a great job in defence this week, this year. But it'll be interesting to see who, uh, who shows up. What? I said he's hopeless. Tedesco? Yeah. Like, as soon as he went to the Roosters, my man crush was you, over. You he know, cheated on me. Yeah, so you lost your man crush because then we went to the Roosters, not because he wasn't a good player. Tom Rover time. He had a man, he had a man <laughs> crush because he was a different team. Admit it, it's about the Roosters. <laughs> no, it's not about the Roosters. Right. I don't mind the Roosters. And you know what? Now, um, Steve did actually give me his tips. Oh, Steve, Steve actually gave me his tips. So, talk rubbish for a couple of so, seconds. Uh, just right. so, so everyone's out there, out there is uh, listening. Um, I'm curious to see if anyone thinks they could pick a grand finals this far out. Because I'm really tempted to pick between four teams. I've got four teams. Uh, Rabbitohs, Panthers, Dragons, and the Ugly Ducklings. I meant the Roosters. <laughs> They'd be my four. All right, who's... Well, I, I think I think Panthers and, and, and Rabbitohs would be my tip at the moment for grand finals. Come on, come on. Well, I was just talking garbage. So, Steve... <laughs> So Steve's tips are going to be Cowboys. Oh, he's a hater too. They're all haters over here. Uh, predictably, the Rabbitohs against the Sharks, the Eels against the Knights, and the Roosters. I can't believe that. He's tipped the Roosters against the Tigers. Wow. Those players out. Well, let's just see, because we've gone... Wow. Steve and I have got 100% opposites. Hang on, is that Steve's face? It is Steve's, Steve's face. Wow. Unbelievable. Anyway, so uh, that's our tips tonight. Don't forget the uh, competition. Uh, go onto the Facebook site and... Give us your prediction, uh, New South Wales or Queensland, and by how much. And the, um, the the winning entry will win a fabulous, fabulous, fabulous prize. Um, NRL from the sidelines, ugly mug. That's correct. Yes, in, yeah, featuring Brian. <laughs> um, so, anything else to say before we close up, Brian? Nope. Hey, we're looking for a sponsor out there if anyone's interested. Yeah, yeah, we'd be happy to have a sponsor. We want to fix a bit of our sound quality. <laughs> you can't change that about you. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, all right, well, it's been a great night, and uh, thank you, uh, Ku Klux Klan Adam Reynolds, and uh, we, will, uh, we will see you next week. Uh, be sure to watch. See you later. Bye. Ku Klux Klan.